let's go over the answers to the activity. Um, and again, please pause this one if you want to try it yourself and see if you can figure them out, but let's look at the answers. So number one, it says the function g of x is given by the following graph. It asks us then to figure out what's the limit as x approaches one of g, what's the limit as x approaches negative two of g, and what's the limit as x approaches infinity of g. So towards one, Again, I could look at the wall, but let's just get the answer. On the left-hand side, it appears to be headed towards 2. On the right-hand side, it appears to be 2. And remember, you're always looking for that y value for determining the limit. Um, and even noticing that the actual graph, there's a point at 5, which is actually where g of x is defined. So if I was to ask you, well, what is g of 1? We'd say that that's equal to 5. Um, and this is another thing that is important with the definition of continuity. Uh, which this one is not because it has a hole, but the limit is actually not in agreement with that. The limit of from both the left and the right hand side is equal to two, and that's all we need to have a general limit to be defined. Basically, both directions have to head at the same point. If they are, the limit is defined. Now towards negative two, notice that it is continuous, and the general principle there is that uh, the limit is just equal to the value negative one, but again, I could use the wall method I'm gonna, from the left-hand side, I'm headed towards negative one. From the right-hand side, I'm headed towards negative one, both the same. So that limit exists in and is negative one. And lastly, the limit towards infinity would be as I go up to the right. Since this appears to be a linear function, again, we don't necessarily know because we don't have this formula, but given the graph, it appears that, you know, usually this arrow means it's gonna continue going in the same exact sort of way, um, which means it's gonna keep going upwards towards infinity. Um, and that would be a good graphical example. Now let's look at another one. Let's look at the second uh, example. Um, and again, try it yourself first. If you think you challenge, challenge yourself to figure it out uh, and pause it and then play it when you're ready to check. Uh, let's try to do this one numerically, I suppose. Um, and again, you always feel free to use your calculator to help you with these as well. Um, but looking for the limit towards x is equal to, uh, as x approaches one, here, uh, there is no issue with one in the function. So a, an easy way to do this would be to just plug in one and figure it out, which would be one third plus two, which would be two and a third. Um, and converting that to a fraction would be seven thirds. So that should approach seven thirds. Or if you're using a calculator, you should see it should get very close to 2.333 um, on either side. And again, we could do that via plugging in values such as 0.9. Um, so I'd have, let's go ahead and try that. One divided by 0.9 plus two. Whoops, I need these parentheses. Then plus two. And that would give me 2.34. And if I check the right hand limit, that would be one. But one thing that I want you guys to see here is that often doing things numerically is really tedious or sometimes making a graph is tedious. So whatever way is the easiest is, is the best in my mind way of figuring it out. But it really depends on the context of the question. There's a lot of different ways. I want you to kind of understand all the different ways because sometimes one way might not really work and we need to expand our toolbox. But anyways, notice it is getting close to 2.3, uh, 2.33 repeating, uh, which is the fraction seven thirds. Anyways, what about the limit towards negative two? Now, noticing this one, I would instantly think something different here because here it's undefined at negative two. This is gonna re result in uh, most likely an asymptote or something else weird. Um, and so if I plug it in, like I did with this one, it just doesn't work, I fail. So what do I do next? Well, again, I could check numerically or graphically here. I think graphically is going to be the best bet. Let's just try graphing it because in my opinion, usually that is the fastest way, but it's not always perfect. And what I can see is towards negative two, notice I get that, that break in the function, that vertical asymptotes occurring. Notice that the left-handed limit towards negative two is minus infinity. The right-handed limit towards minus two is positive infinity. Those do not agree. When they don't agree, remember that limit does not exist. So sometimes undefined values mean the limit doesn't exist. Sometimes they might, it just depends you got, and that's why you really got to look at the graph, check the numbers to see. And the limit towards infinity here, um, 
here it's kind of hard to tell. Now, actually, I, I haven't done any examples of how, how would you do it numerically towards infinity, but remember this this limit means what happens as it, go, it gets closer and closer to the biggest possible number. So really, to check a limit towards infinity, you just want to pick arbitrarily large numbers, say 100 or 1,000 or a million, and that would help you determine what's going on as you get really, really big. So checking numerically, well, it appears as though it's flattening out um, and the, the value that's flattening out, I could always just move my cursor to the right to see, well, what's what's the value of Y seem to be? And what it kind of, what I notice is that it's, it's above two always as far as I'm going um, in the Y value. Um, but the question is, does it ever, will it ever continue to go down below two? Is that headed towards zero? Is it headed, you know, towards two? Is that headed towards one? How, how do I really discern that? But my point is, let's say we try a hundred, see what happens. Um, notice that I get invalid here because the graph only has, uh, how, how graphing calculators work is they really only, um, they only graph within their, their window, their, their given domain. And so if you try using values outside of that, it might not, it might yell at you or say, this is a problem. But you could always just go back to the main menu. I mean, you could expand your window, but it might be just easier to plug in 100. So like in this case, if I just plug in 100, I would get 1 divided by 102 plus 2. And that would be 2.009. And in this case, well, if I kind of think about this, this fraction has to be purely positive if I'm keeping my number positive. And it's plus 2. Well, this fraction is getting really, really small. Even if, say, I plug in a million, that would be 1 divided by a million in 2 plus 2. Well, that's essentially going to be almost 0 plus 2. It's going to be basically 2. And summarizing, uh, as I go towards infinity, essentially as I plug in larger and larger number, this is trending towards 2, and that's that. And since it's uh, um, a, a limit towards infinity is always a right-handed limit, or it's from the left, um, but yeah, it's on the um, technically it's on the left-hand side because it's going to the right, if you see what I mean. Sorry that I was a little bit confusing there, but essentially what we get is this is flattening out towards 2 again, it might take a little bit of thinking to really come up with the proper thing, but that might be your first guess. I don't know. It just depends on what the graph looks like, but we'll refer to this as, as this is called a horizontal asymptote as opposed to a vertical asymptote. So looking at the graph of this rational function, we have a curve curvature sort of like this and kind of like this on the other side where the asymptotes are the, number you know the the vertical lines in between which sort of outline the shape of the graph and they give us actually our limiting behavior uh where basically as it approaches infinity it's going to approach this particular line the horizontal line y is equal to um this horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote is at negative two anyways a key towards figuring out the limits of certain functions can be looking for those sort of flattening out or you know vert going vertically or going horizontally um, sort of procedures